and he had the vision. When you guys move, we're all going to fall apart. People are going to die, and nobody will know why. That was his vision, and sure enough, when we moved, that's what happened. So there was a lost generation, those my age, in the 50s and early 60s. We didn't have any teachings from the wise elders who passed away when they moved over there. London Harbor would be emptied out by a government relocation in 1964. Hitlamas was the last person to vacate the village, stubbornly refusing to leave his homelands. The, the motivation of the government was um, ease of administration. We, do, we don't want to have to travel across the Queen Charlotte Sound and the Queen Charlotte Straits to carry out the, our fiduciary responsibility for those First Nations. It's much easier if we get them right handy into this um, community just out of Port Hardy. We're on ask to move. We were told to move, you know. So that uh, really destroyed a lot of feelings for being here, you know. We want, didn't want to be here. When we moved, we packed a lot of our men near clothes, our beddings, our beds, and left our furniture, whatever we had over there. before we could go back to pick up the rest of our things. The Indian agency had gone back to burn the houses down. When they first arrived on the, the shores here, where they're not familiar with where to get the crabs, where to get the clams, where to go hunting, this is a completely different land for the people of Smith Inlet and the Nakwatao. The promises that were made for when they came to Dzalkwadi of houses, of running water, toilets, and all of those things that are necessary for the people moving over here. And they weren't, there was only five homes that were here. And all of the people that were moved from the two tribes were expected to live in those five homes. What would it have been like back then, those people arriving and they see these homes and they don't have running water and they don't have toilets. I get so angry, I just find it so deplorable that you know, individuals back in Ottawa could make a decision and individuals who'd never been out there before could undertake to have our people moved from those traditional places without having had proper discussions with our people in a way that they fully understood what they were going into. It was very, very underhanded the way that it was done. Four years after the move, a media firestorm erupted when a politician brought the conditions of Selkwadi to the attention of the House of Commons. Liberal MP Richard Durante told a House of Commons committee that living conditions on the reserve were dangerously overcrowded because many Indians had been forced to move there against their wishes. Mr. MacDonald replied that the idea for the move came from the Indians themselves. The deputy minister conceded the housing conditions on the Sequati Reserve are strained and some new housing is planned. Allegations that relocated Indians' homes were burned so that they could not return to them were Indian denied. Affairs regional director said he was not claiming the new village was a perfect solution but he believed improvements are continuing. Indians at the Salkwadi Reserve here have welcomed an investigation. The Indians said they had moved under a false impression. Everything that we do has a direct connection to the land and the territories, because that's where it all comes from. That's why it's so incredibly important for us to find ways to get there. Every time I come to Blunden Harbor, it just feels like home, even though I've never lived here. It makes sense to me why I've never ever felt comfortable living in my modern home in Zulkwadi. I've always felt, it's a, it's a home, but it's not always felt like home. Coming back to Blunden today, this is home. Today when I see young people go out there, as soon as they see their land, the feeling as soon as you reach that, they'll start crying. Before this, I was ashamed of who I was, ashamed of where I came from, ashamed of our reserve. 
like I've kind of reconnected with a part of myself that I didn't know was there. We've survived it all. We're all out here together learning what we did in our time, how people lived.